For listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast, Episode 24, and our guest today is the CEO of Dealer Synergy, Sean V. Bradley. Here we go. You're dialed in to the Dealer Playbook Podcast, where it's all about winning auto dealer strategies that deliver proven results. And now your hosts, Robert Weissman and Michael Cirillo. Hello, and you are listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast, episode 24. Thank you so much for stopping by. So incredibly appreciative that you take the time each and every week to learn new winning auto dealer strategies that will increase your ability to sell cars, enhance your ability to deal with customers. We are delivering results. I'm here with my co-host and partner in crime, Robert Wiseman. How you doing, buddy? I am doing amazing, Michael. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. You are so welcome. In fact, I am. Ta- I, I feel like I've taken this back, but I'm super excited about today's show, um, <laughs> like we are about every show. But you know what? That's because we've we've lucked out. I feel so incredibly fortunate. I know you do too. We talk about it all the time. We've managed to round up some of the most incredible thought leaders, speakers, trainers, consultants in and out of the automotive industry. I'm thinking back over the last. 23 episodes. And I mean, most recently, Elise Kephart, but you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, Tracy Myers, Troy Spring, Craig Lockard. We've had so many. Willie Jolly. Rand, Rand Fishkin, Rand Willie Fishkin. Jolly. Yeah. I mean, I it's mean, been. I can't even remember all of them. Mark but I, They've all been so incredible. Mark, Mark Tuart, best selling author. Um, Check them out for yourself if you haven't, guys, at uh, dealerplaybook.com. Yeah, exactly. But, I was just going to say if you haven't listened to previous episodes of the Dealer, of the dealer Playbook, Episode 24 is your first. Do us a favor right now. Go check out thedealerplaybook.com and and listen to some of those past episodes because there's just such an incredible wealth of information that will help you in whatever uh, position in the dealership you're in. Now today, we are talking about how to make money and we couldn't think of anybody better to invite on the show to talk about the specific strategies, tips, tricks, and methods that will get you closer to your financial goals than the man himself, Sean V. Bradley, CSP. Yep. And so, I mean, Robert, you've known Sean for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, when when I was, you know, in, in the front line doing my thing every day, you, uh, I was learning, you know, I was seeing his content online and he had some good stuff that really, really moved me and motivated me. So I wanted to connect with him and I just was very persistent in getting in touch with him. And, uh, finally we connected and he saw, you know, he believed in me and I'll tell you what, he is very, very, very big part of why I'm sitting here today. I mean, he absolutely showed me a different end to the business and he brings a lot of energy to the table. He's, he's, he's his own, you know, he's, he's very unique. Um, you know, people will love them, people will hate them, but that's, that's like anybody that's, that's voices their opinions and, and their expertise, like somebody like Sean does. So yeah. And you know what, there's regardless, there's one undeniable fact and it's that he not only worked on the front lines and made big money, you know, he's, he'll, you'll hear him talk about it. His average units sold per month was in the 30 range. So he's got proof in the pudding, but what he's done is he's turned that into a robust training strategy where he's in and out of dealerships, you know, nearly every day of the week. If you follow him on Facebook, you'll see he's traveling, you know, it's almost like three, four days out of a week, he's traveling to dealerships and one after another, he's taking these dealerships that are, you know, maybe not selling any cars from internet. Maybe they're doing 20, 30, 40, and he's immediately doubling them. You know, we look at, um, the, the most recent dealership that's really made a big, a big impact. Um, Actually, we got to know them was uh, was Ron Boss and his crew. And, yeah. you know, and, and you remember when we sat with them at the Internet Sales 20 group in April and they were talking about how, you know, if they needed to shift some things around Well, Sean jumped in there and boom, next month out of it, 60 units sold from the Internet. The proof is in the pudding. And that's why you are going to find this episode so extremely helpful. Um, without further ado, let's hand let's it over. Let's make some money. Let's make some money, people. Sean Bradley. All right, here we are, episode 24 of the Dealer Playbook Podcast, and I'm going to tell you what, unless you've been living, eating, and breathing under a rock, you will know our guest today, 
Sean V. Bradley, CSP, CEO of Dealer Synergy. Sean, thanks so much for being with us today. My pleasure, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. And, you know, it's it's cool. We connected here just before, you know, hit and record. And we're excited about this episode because, you know, like you said, you don't want to talk about sales specifically. You don't want to talk about, um, you know, some of the other things that we typically talk about in the industry. In fact, you want to talk about how to make money because you said something that really stood out to me, which is, There is a ton of money. There's a tremendous amount of money to be made in the automotive industry. And it's time that we start talking about how to make money. So what we want to do for today's episode with you, the time that we have with you, is really just get into it. We want to kind of turn the time over to you. And let's talk about how can somebody who's in the business, who's maybe only making 400 or 500 bucks a week right now, explode their income and start making money inside of the car business. Yeah, my pleasure. But before I go into that, it's really important that I, I kind of just build the framework for why people listening to this need to pay attention and execute on what I say. I've been in the automotive industry for going on 16 years. That's a long time. And what I found, it, it's there's no gray area. It's either you suck or you don't suck. And I don't mean to offend anybody, but it is what it is. And here are some stats that are fact that's coming right out of my head. There's roughly uh, approximately 17,500 franchise car dealerships in the United States. Out of them, the average dealership has about 10 salespeople, and the average dealership sells about 96 units. So doing some quick math, that means that the average salesperson sells 9.6 units. Now, here's the reality, is that yes, there are 15-car people, there are 20-car people, but that's not the majority, and that's not even the average. The average salesperson sells less than 10 units a month. The average salesperson makes between $42,000 and $47,000 a year. That is horrible. When you look at Glassdoor.com and you look at a McDonald's manager makes about forty-five to forty-six thousand dollars a year, basically managing French fries and cheeseburgers. And no disrespect <laughs> to anybody, but step up your yeah, game. They're making you the money. Make, yeah, you know, forty I mean, hours like, a week. Like, yeah, exactly. And sometimes car people are working fifty, sixty hours to make to to make almost minimum wage. So I want to share with you. Just three quick examples, and I'm going to break down whatever questions that you an- you ask of me. One is that uh, Tammy LeBlue is – I don't know if she's been on your show yet. She's a, a Jim Ziegler protege. This is a woman that basically got in trouble, and she you know, went through some real tough times, and she bounced back. She came back to work at a car dealership at Ord Nissan in Bossier City, Louisiana, where she was selling 47 and a half new cars. And I don't know how many used cars, but I mean 50, 60 units. She was making almost $400,000 a year in Bossier City, Louisiana, not Beverly Hills, California, not New York City, not you know Las Vegas, not in a major market area like Chicago or, or uh, Boston or something like that. She was in Louisiana. Almost 400 grand selling cars. Yeah, That's big I money. Big money out there. Crazy money. Yeah. You know? So there are people like myself. I got into the car business with nothing. I, was, I had bad credit because I went through a divorce. I was in trouble. You know what I mean? I, I had, you know, uh, debts. Uh, you know, I had just problems. I came into this and within, I'd say, four and a half years, almost five years, I left the automotive industry to start my consulting company. Now I own 10 companies. <laughs> I, I'm tracking $100 million. I'm going to repeat that, $100 million. Uh, again, how do you do that? How do you come from the projects in Queens, New York, not to have a pot to piss in, have problems, bad credit, you college loans that you owe, and then be you know, on the fast track to making tremendous amount of millions of dollars? Because of the automotive industry, because I learned how to make money in the automotive industry. I made a ton of money when I was selling cars. I averaged 30 units a month at Weiss Litter Lincoln Mercury Mazda in Bricktown, New Jersey. And then after I left the front lines, I started making a tremendous amount of money, even more by teaching other people how to sell cars, whether they're on the showroom or on the internet. Questions? <laughs> So, no, no, yeah, I mean, no doubt proof in the pudding. And, and I love this because, I mean, that's really what this is all about. It's all about how to make money. I mean, who wants to do anything? I mean, 
you know, you hit me. You're like, man, 40 hours a week working at McDonald's managing French fries. And, and of course, that's no disrespect. That's the smarter person out of, I mean, <laughs> not for nothing. That's the money maker. Yeah, they're, they're working they're, 40 they're, hours and they're making the same amount of money because the car business, when you're not making money, it is not fun. You know what I mean? Looking at it like it would, it could not be fun when you're not selling cars. So let, no. let, I mean, let's, let's get into this though. I mean, so you walk into a dealership there, there's, you know, the guy that, you know, needs to be making more money. He knows he needs to be making more money. What, what does he do? Where, where do you go with this guy? I love this. Okay. A very dear friend of mine that you both have met is Dr. Willie Jolly. Uh, the author of a setback is a setup for a comeback. Hey, really? shout out to Willie Jolly. So listen, Willie, uh, you know, says something I think is absolutely brilliant. There's two sets. There is the mindset and then there's a skill set. And I'm going and I'm going to play this out a little bit deeper. The secret from Rhonda Byrne, the laws of attraction and manifestation, you know, the way that you think what you perceive is what you will achieve. Right. Dr. Covey right. says from the seven habits of highly effective people, things have to be created twice. First mentally and then physically. So to answer your question, Michael, it's very simple. The first thing is they have to have vision. They have to have foresight. They have to have the desire. And what they cannot have is the barrier. You know what people's worst enemy is? It's themselves. It's their own, you know, self-loathing or, 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 or complacency with mediocrity. And I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but it is what it is. Most people don't think that they can achieve things. They say, yeah, I want to be rich. Yeah, I want to sell 30 cars. But secretly, they're like, I'll never do that shit. Yeah. I'll never be able to do that. And so I think the first step is having vision, clear vision. I'm talking about a vision where a blind person could see see vivid colors type vision. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. They need to be mm -hmm. able to know what they want. You can't build a multi-million dollar, you know, custom house without blueprints. You're not going to go to Home Depot, get a bunch of people that, you know, that are, that are illegal and, and go build a house without having blueprints. So how are you going to expect to have your career built and, and executed without a blueprint? So you need to begin with the end result in mind. You need to be able to articulate exactly what it is you want to the detail. And I'm going to be specific with this. I have a strategy called the money mind map. And what I teach showroom sales consultants to do is first, begin with the end result in mind. And what I mean by that is focus on starting with your current situation. How much money do you owe based on your fixed cost, your situational, your incidentals? And what I mean by that is your rent, your mortgage, your child support, your car payments, your gas, your tolls, your movie money. Robert, you have a child. Michael, you got, you know, you got a child as well. So again, if you want to take your kids out to Chuck E. Cheese, you, want, you have birthdays, how much is all that money? If you walk, walk into a car dealership and you have no freaking clue what your expenses are, that's a problem. Now, the th next thing is if you want to just work to survive, that's pathetic. No disrespect. It is what it is. So now you want to start adding to it things that you want, such as 401ks. Let's get some grant out here and talk about real estate, real estate investments, you know, uh, college, you know, for your kids, whatever it is. And you add that money. So let's just play this out. Let's say based on your, your monthly nut that you got to crack and things that you want to enhance the quality of your life, like real estate inv investments, stocks, et cetera, you know, college, whatever. Let's say it's eight grand. Here's the next problem most salespeople have is that if they have a number in their head, they make that money, but they forget a, a big variable. It's called taxes. So what happens is you've got 20 car people or 15 car people that are broke that don't even have money for lunch money. They can't even go to McDonald's because they yeah. don't have it. And they bum lunch or bum cigarettes. So here's why. You need to have a reality <laughs> check of your – yeah, keep up. So you have to have a reality check about the tax liability situation. So specifically, if you need and want to make eight grand – you can't just make eight grand and be okay. You have to at least make, in my opinion, and I'm not a tax accountant, but at least make 12 grand to net out eight grand. Are you guys with me? Yep. Yeah, the makes next sense. piece of The next piece of it is your ACPC, your average compensation per copy. What does that mean? Depending on all your salary, spiffs, spins, bonuses, commissions, et cetera, you have per car X amount of dollars that you are going to turn around and be able to generate. How do you figure that out? Secret tip number one is look at whatever amount of money you made from the OEM spins, bonuses, and then just divide it by how many cars you sold and boom, that's your average compensation per copy. So let's do basic math. If you want and need to make eight grand to do that, we already know with the IRS liability, you need to turn on it and gross 12 grand. How are you going to turn on and gross 12 grand? Well, depending on what your ACPC is, and I would stress depending 
on what your ACPC is, it's going to dictate how many cars you need to sell. Specifically, if you turn around and need um, to make that 12 grand to net eight, and you're, you're only at $400 per copy, then you need to sell 30 cars. But on, on the flip side is if you're at $500 per copy, you know, uh, commission, you know, with all the compensations thrown in, then you're only at 24 units you got to create. So this is the thing that I'm talking about here. And I could spend hours talking about this, but most people don't have a plan of what they're going to do. If you walk into a car dealership and you don't have a freaking exact number of what you're going to make at the end of the month, that's a problem. And now let's talk to it about an internet department. If you want to make, because before we press record, Robert, you mentioned how we flip dealerships around. You know, we turn dealerships from doing 50 units to 100 units, 150 units to 300 car stores. True story. It's all over the internet. Mm -hmm. How you do it is the same way. You back into it. If you want to turn around, if your store is only selling 100 cars out of the entire dealership, and I'm I'm using this because it's specific here, the average dealership in the United States only sells 96 cars. Everybody want to turn around and make another million, 1.5, pay attention really close, okay? First thing is this. What is the easiest way you could do it? Dr. Covey says it's really simple. The third habit, put first things first. If you're going to put first things first, what that also means is you're going to put your biggest effort, time and money towards what you're going to get the biggest return on. What is that? There's nothing. Pause for a dramatic effect. There's nothing more powerful than the internet. When 92 to 99% of Americans go online, that's where you need to focus on. So if you're a 100-car store, you want to turn around and put another 40, 50 cars on the books within 60 days, pay attention. What you need to be able to do is create a viable internet solution. What do I mean by that? Is that you, if you got to back into the numbers, to net 40 cars, to net 40 cars, to go from 100 to 140, all you got to do is create a model. Here's what you do. You turn around and you take, uh, I'd say, probably about 500 to 600 leads. Here's why. Because out of 500 to 600 leads, you're going to sell about 50 to 55 units. Out of those 50 to 55 units, you will be able to net increase those 40 cars. Now, this is where people are going to get confused. You can't just dumb it back and say, okay, I need 40 cars, which means I need 80 bodies to show up, which means I need 160 appointments. You can't do that because if you do 160, 80, 40, if you just backward pencil into it, which most dealerships do, you will sell 40 cars, but they're not going to be a, a, a true net increase because some of those 40 cars will come from multiple ways. They might be people that would have came in and bought a car yeah. anyway. It could have been a repeat customer referral. So for you to have that true net increase, you've got to pack those numbers for the acceleration point. So again, if you want to net 40, you got to build a mousetrap that's going to sell you 55 cars, 50 cars minimum. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now let's go, let's pencil back into it. How are you going to turn around and sell 55 cars? Let's just use 50 as a round number. Well, then you need to get about 100 bodies to show up. To get about 100 bodies to show up, you need to make about 200 appointments. Let's backwards into it. If you take 200 appointments, and I'm going to round it off. I know there's 4.3 weeks in a month, but you divide it by four, boom, you're looking at 50 appointments a week. Okay, that's it. Divide that by five working days. You're looking at 10 appointments per day. So then you got to figure out how am I going to make 10 appointments per day? You got to have X amount of reps. In my opinion, if you have at least, you know, three to four appointment setters that are doing, you know, two to three appointments there, you're at, you know, what? Uh, you're around 10 to 12 appointments that you're making a day. So do you see what I'm saying? If you don't have a roadmap to be able to map into this, you're going to be screwed. Now let's just see how much money we just made. If you're able to net increase 40 cars times two G's a copy front and back, say the number out loud, guys, that's $80,000 a month times 12 months. You're at what? Almost a million dollars net increase. Yep. One million. To the business. The eight, that's so what I mean by making money. How many people do you really think? know how to actually do that for the showroom, for the, for the internet department, for the BDC, for the F&I department, for all the profit centers. Most people just throw shit against the wall and whatever sticks, sticks. That's crazy. Yeah, it's called running a business, having a plan from the, from the showroom up. A hundred percent. That's you, Robert. You just said something that I'm I'm very passionate about. Everybody runs around. The car business is your own business. The car business is your own business. Have you ever heard that before, guys? Yeah. Well, and we kind of say it a little bit. Yeah. Always. Yeah, but here's the problem, though. If you talk to a showroom sales consultant and say, "Hey, buddy, hey, you got to turn around, and take this career seriously, because car sales is like owning your own business." Here's the problem. If they, didn't know how to, if they knew how to own their own business and run their own business, chances are they wouldn't be working for you. Hello, right? 
So what you need to be able to do is teach people entrepreneurship. The road to the sale is not entrepreneurship. The road to the sale is not owning your own business. The road to the sale is how to up, engage, and close a customer. But you know what? Uh, you know, if you really believe that car sales is like owning your own business, like Robert Wiseman did when he was on the showroom floor, it has to do with marketing. It has to do with advertising. It has to do with sales, with closing, projecting, forecasting, time management, PR. It's, and, yeah, it's a business. And there's a lot of, you know, components to it, just like any other business. It's not easy. So w- would you suggest then, Sean, I mean, you said it, it's, it is running a business. I mean, it could be looked at as running a business within a business, but before that you need to know how to run a business. You need to, you need to be focused on entrepreneurship and, and acquiring skill set mindset of an entrepreneur. How, how do you implement that to your people though, Sean, to the, to the, to the manager out there, to the dealer out there? Like what, what do they do to the culture with their culture to, you know, have that promote that kind of uh you know promotion to their people well again it, it it starts with the reality check that even if i go into a store and i try to evangelize the message there's going to be people that receive it that run with it and there are going to be people that are gonna be like this yeah. is never going to work yeah. or what have you so let's just let's just clear that up really quick and say okay theoretically what should happen is this is being able to give awareness. That's what I do as a trainer and as a consultant. I'm not a magician. I, I, I'm not. I'm not divine in nature. I can't just major, you know, wave a, a magic wand or a finger and make it all right. But what I could do is is give people the awareness and say, look, forget about everybody else. Look at me. If you could take somebody from the projects in New York without a pot of pissing, troubled, you know, background as a kid, you know, 20 years ago and be able to become a multimillionaire, you know what I mean? I'm not the you know, smartest pencil in the box. I didn't graduate college and all that stuff. If I could do it, everybody's got the shot to being successful. And there's a ton of people in the industry that have similar or even bigger stories than I have. So I think by leading by example and showing them what the possibility is, that's the first part is, is basically showing them that this is possible. It is real. You can have success. And that's part of the reason, guys, on a personal level, why I, I do what I do. Some people misunderstand me and that I have the black diamonds, $100,000 in jewelry, the, the cars, the this, that. I do that because, you know, for me, it's all part of the show. I want to show people that they could get the finer things in life. Because let's stop. Let's stop the BS for a second here. People don't work at a car dealership because they want to, you know, donate blood or save trees. Again, they're in the car industry to make money. Money's not a bad word. Profit is not a dirty word. You know what I mean? It's okay to want nice things. And as a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you do have altruism in your heart, which I do, if you are a good person and you do, if you have faith in all those things, with the amount of money that you could make being successful, you could do a hell of a lot for good and charity. I'm just saying, right or wrong. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. absolutely. So the first thing to answer your question is by giving them awareness. And then this is the other thing that drives me crazy. Giving awareness is great, but if you don't give them a roadmap with GPS precision, it's just BS. That's what people do in this industry. They spin BS. They basically say, you can be successful. You can wear the black diamonds. You can have the $150,000 cars. You can do all that, but I don't know how to do it myself. So how am I going to tell you? That's the problem. Yeah. It's the, it's, they get to the one point where they get you excited and like, car sales is your own business. Get on the floor. Go get them. Bring them in. <laughs> yeah. Get them in. They don't, they don't give you the roadmap. You need GPS precision. What do I mean by that? I mean like me. I have ADD, so I'm driving talking to Robert Wiseman. I, I, I miss my, my turn. It happens. Robert, how many times? Yeah. Oh, shit, I missed my exit. But you know what? <laughs> Thank God I got my Garmin. That chick keeps me focused because she says recalculate, and guess what? I take the next turn, and I'm back on course, and I'll eventually get to where I need to get to. If you do not have GPS precision on how to be successful, how to make money, how the hell are you going to make money? Hope exactly. is for the homeless. No. <laughs> Hope is for the hopeless. <laughs> Sean, let me ask you this. And this is something I mentioned with uh, when I was we were talking with Elise on here the other day. As far as like the the structure inside in an internet department, this one I just wanted to hear your opinion. What is you still stand firm behind that the BDC, like the the, the appointment setter is not greeting the customer when they come in, etc. Yeah, good catch. First of all, let me just clear this up is I respect everybody. And what I'm going to say, I'm going to preface this here. 
that I am not divine in nature. I am gifted what I do, but I'm not divine in nature. So my opinion is my opinion. That means that you could have a different opinion and be completely equally successful, yeah. or even more. But so no my doing this for 16 years and training 10,000 automotive professionals and working with 1,000 dealerships, okay? Here's what I've learned, is that there is a best way to do this, in my opinion. And it's more of a hybrid situation. First thing I'm gonna tell you, it's not BDC. BDC is the most degraded, bastardized acronym in the whole damn industry. It means something to somebody different all over the place. So here's what a BDC is to me. It's a, it's a centralized department strategy and technology structure that proactively drives business to a dealership with all profit centers. Example, an internet department, uh, phone up department or call center, unsold showroom traffic, service, service conversions, lease retention, fleet, orphan owners, data mining, campaign management, cross promotional marketing, just to name a few. That is what a true BDC They're is. They're pumping BDC. all those is what you're saying. They're pumping on and, all those but I don't categories. Believe in BDC. I don't believe in BDC at first. I think that BDC is dangerous because it's so much stuff. What happens to dealers is they get some parasite vendor, a CRM company, you know, that basically says, ooh, you can sell a lot of cars and you can do all this BDC stuff. They do it and the implementation plan sucks and it doesn't work. That's why Mercedes-Benz manufactured failed BDC. That's why the majority of dealerships, 80% of dealerships that try BDC are non-profitable and broken. How do I know? Because I've spoken to over 130 NAD and NCM 20 groups, my own 20 group. I work with several different manufacturers and everybody still can't figure out BDC almost 20 years later. Because when you're trying to do too much shit, it's going to be what? Shit. What you need to be able to do is slow the hell down and specialize. Now, what I believe in is doing an internet department that takes phone ups. That's what I do 95% of the time is I sell dealers off of BDC at first. I slow them the hell down because with an internet department that takes phone ups, you could make millions and millions of more dollars. And once you get into rhythm with an internet department that takes phone ups, then you could scale in the right way, the additional profit centers one by one. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So now to answer your question about the lease question here, here's the way that I feel that it should be. I've tried this as a one-man show where I sold 33 units by myself, taking it from cradle to grave, and there's a point of diminishing return right there. And I've also did this at Pine Belt where I was selling 110 units out of my internet department back in 2002, 2003, and I had a team of uh, like ninjas like myself. And here's the problem. The problem is, Robert, so I'm not leading this. I'm going to answer your questions specifically. Give me a number. How many leads? More than uh, like 400, though. Pick a number of 400. Uh, 800. Okay, 800. Michael Cirillo, if you have 800 leads and you don't have appointment setters, how many salespeople do you think should be um, able to handle 800 leads? Quick, Lot, man. Yeah, lots. 10. No. 10. Okay, wrong. Not even close to enough. Here's why. 800 <laughs> 15 to 16. No, even 16. You guys are both wrong. It's never enough. Here's why. If you turn around and you take 800 fresh leads from, from August 1st to August 31st, 800 leads. If you turn around and you sell even 100 cars, that's over a 10% closing ratio. That means there's 700 people that didn't buy a vehicle. The fact is, J.D. Power even says, and everybody validate, the average buying cycle is between 45 and 90 days. So that means at the end of August, August 31st, if you did not sell 700 fresh leads. Yes, some are dead, bogus, bought elsewhere, changed mind, cuckoo, whatever. In my opinion, you're going to start with at least, at least 350 from just August. What about July? What about June? So I'm saying, honestly, you're going to start September 1st with 400 carryover leads. Then in September, you're going to get an additional 800 fresh leads. You now have a residual flow factor of 12 Hundred leads. Now let's get into this, right, Robert? Because no dealership is going to put sixteen people on on just things. So let's just let's just get really stupid with it. If you had sixteen people, they're not working bell to bell, you know. They're not all. And plus, you got to remember, if you have six twelve hundred leads and you have sixteen salespeople, they have to do product presentation, demo drive, delivery, chase steps. They yeah. also their days off. They have their own problems. They've got kids. They've got graduations. They've got holidays. They've got playing hooky so they can hang out with their spouse, whatever. So that means, in my opinion, that at some point, at least 25 to 50% of those people are not going to be in that internet room pounding those leads. So what are you going to do? You're going to have 1,200 leads there. Who's going to be following up with them? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's a different way to think of this. Now let's flip that around. 
How about this? If I now had in my dealer synergy model 800 leads, I would have seven appointment setters, six to seven. So I'm, I'm going to be high. I would do it six, but let's just do seven for dramatic purposes. If I have seven appointment setters, these are not BDC reps. These are not telemarketers. These are highly trained phone dealer synergy experts, okay? These people are trained in outbound phone call process, inbound phone call process, qualification, escalation. Email sells the phone call. Phone call sells the appointment. The appointment builds the relationship, product presentation, demo drive delivery. You get what I'm getting at? These are strong phone sales people. So now let's do the math. You got seven people. They're going to make or take 120 calls in a day, 120 calls in a day. Why? Because you only have an 11 to 14% connection ratio fact. Some of these numbers are fugazi that these people or these so-called trainers are putting out there. It's an 11 to 14%. So now you take seven bodies times 120. That means 840 calls. In the month of September, there's 22 employee working days. What do I mean by that? Usually only five working days. So now you take 840 calls a day in the month of September times... 22 employee working days, that's 18,480 phone calls. Come on, man. Keep it real. There's no way in hell 16 salespeople on the showroom floor are going to be responsible for 18,000 phone calls. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But my teams do it. They do it all the time every day. So let's go through this. At 18,480 phone calls times 0.14, at a 14% connection ratio, they're going to have 2,587 conversations. Out of the 2,587 conversations times 0.25, they're going to make 25% into appointments. That's 646 appointments times, and I'm going under on my numbers, times 0.55. At a 55% appointment show ratio, they're going to get 355 bodies to show up at the store times 0.42. At a 42% selling ratio, they have 150 internet units sold, just penciled back. Now – Okay, that's 800 leads. Well, no, that's more oh, than that. It's 800 plus, uh, yeah, plus 800 plus phone calls a week. Is what yes. I'm and the residual and the residual flow factor. Do you follow me? Plus mm -hmm. the residual flow factor. That's how you pencil back into this. Does that make sense? Yep. Absolutely. I've, I mean, I've seen this. This is one of my favorite uh, things, uh, workshops you do is when you, you show this. And I use that. And it, it does make sense because it, it just comes down to the numbers. But it, it also has a lot to do with the quality of that conversation. Absolutely. The training of your, the, the rep is, is crucial. Here's one, Sean, that I want to hear your thought on quick. This is something that always aggravated me. And this one's a good one, dealers. You know, so listen to this. So let's say you're in a store that you're doing an amazing job organically uh, from your website generating leads. You're generating a ton of leads from your website. Is it, do you, I, the, my, when I was in the position in the internet, you know, running an internet department position, this drove me nuts that yes, I was, I was cranking it up and I was able to, to, to drum up lots of organic leads, but they would not buy. I could not get the dealer to invest the money to buy at least my P my primary market area, third party leads. Do you think no matter how many leads you're pounding out on your, your website and through your own, you know, organic channels, do you, should you still be buying your, your primary markets, third party leads that are available at least like within like your backyard at the very least? Is it bear shit in the woods? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. But why? What's the okay, thought here, about this? Because I know I've seen this other places here, that people don't here, do this. Because, you know, because dealers are, are not in tuned. Here's why. Let me, I'm going to give you on a fiscal level. I'm all about money. That's my whole thing. Make money Mondays, Sean V. Bradley, multimillionaire. I'm all about money. And I speak dealer and I speak GM. It's really simple. Average cost per sale in advertising. It's not me, guys. NADA, the National Automobile Dealer Association, says – that in 2014, the average cost per sale is $640 per car. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. That basically means that they're spending $640 to sell an automobile. You guys with me on that? Yep. Okay, now let's pencil this back. Let's use Auto Buy Tell or Cars Direct or True Car. I think they're all great services. So let's just say you, you sign up with one of those three services and you buy 100 leads. It costs you $20 per lead or less or more, whatever around there. This is average 20 dollars per lead. 100 leads are gonna cost you $2,000. At a modest 10% closing ratio, 
What is the math? Your average cost per sale is $200 per car. So Mr. Dealer Principal, if you're listening, or Mr. General Manager, if I could reduce your cost by one, by like literally down to a third per car sold, would you consider it? Absolutely you would, and absolutely you should. So on a fiscal level, it is economically responsible. Hell, it's economically imperative that you look at third-party providers because their cost per sale is a fraction of what traditional and all the squandered spending is. Well, yeah, and the and why I say at least the ones that are in your no, no, you no, know, no. backyard. I, I, don't go there yet. I want. I want to. I want to. I want to. Let me get my thunder in here. I want to just <laughs> want to focus on money first. Because again, if it doesn't make sense, it won't. Ma- you know what I mean? You won't do it. So I want it to turn around. I want dealers to understand that economically, it makes all the sense in the world. Now, strategically, here's the reality. You cannot just close your eyes and pretend that you're invisible because you do exist. You're not invisible. What I mean by that is you can't not buy the lead source providers and think that those leads don't exist. So God forbid if you're a dealer listening to this and you don't buy third-party leads because you think that they suck or you don't, you don't think that you need them because you're generating so many leads, man, you better hope that you don't have a dealer synergy competitor that's there because I'm advocating all my dealers buy leads. The cost per ownership and acquisition is so much cheaper, plus the, there are opportunities to do business. For the love of God, why would you not want to buy 200, 300, 400 leads to turn around and sell 30, 40 cars? It makes, it makes all the sense in the world, and I would use this for conquesting purposes. I would first, like you said, Robert, I agree with you, secure your primary market area. So if I'm in Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, I'm Philadelphia in the New Jersey area, and I was a Ford dealership, I would definitely buy all the Ford leads, let's say in South Jersey and Cherry Hill and Marlton, and maybe even in Philadelphia. But that's just the basic part of it. I would actually go further out because I want my shot. Do you know that um, the, the most recent stats that were provided at the last Internet Sales 20 group from, I, I don't know if it was True Car Auto by Tell, but they basically said that the average car shopper only visits 1.2 dealerships. Do you understand what that means? They only go to one store. Sometimes a little bit more, but they do the majority of their research and their fact-finding online. J.D. Power says that the majority of reasons why people use the internet is to eliminate bad choices. Let me freaking repeat what I just said. The average person that buys a car only visits one damn store nowadays, technically 1.2. So what does that mean? Is that you've got a shot. If you turn on and have, if if, if I'm in South Jersey, damn sure I will get leads 45 minutes out of my PMA. Why? Because if I could present my value package proposition, what is different and better about me and my organization to a, a prospect outside of my area, and hell, if I'm willing to deliver that vehicle free of charge to their home or office, I will be able to conquest. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. But I was, and I know that that's the aggressive, you know, that's the, the, the real you know, laser focus, aggressive approach to it. But my thing is just like at the very least, even if because some people are so against the third party leads, like buying them, they think it's, you know, they, they, they do none of that. But I, think, I just, yeah, think but you know what? They don't, they don't so know the much. reason why they don't know the yeah. reason why they they've never done an audit. The, the dealers that are against it nine times out of 10 are, are not even auditing the current advertising that they're doing. They're sitting here spending 7,500 to 20 grand on a full page ad in the newspaper and they don't even, they they have no way of tracking it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, or they're getting very lackluster results. Yeah. So what we're talking about as is, and, and, Guys, let me jump one this let me jump in because you hit it on the head this drives me crazy they cancel auto by tell or true car cars direct because they think their leads suck it's not the case <laughs> you know what it is it has to do with other mitigating factors the crm might not be set up the right way the automated action plans might be stupid in the crm the email templates might be might suck they got misspellings yeah, it's they, the uh, execution you know, it yes the they execution. might not have enough people they might have the wrong people they might not have the right process they there could be a a plethora of of a reasons legitimate reasons why you're not selling a third party lead that has nothing to do with the third party. You're absolutely correct. And that's one of the problems. Uh, Michael, you hit it. One, they're not being able to quantify traditional, uh, but they just think that the leads suck. You know, B is that, you know, oh, the leads are not converting, so they must suck. Or, you know, oh, I'm getting duplicates. You know what also drives me crazy since we're talking about lead source providers (laughs) is that dealers have this ridiculous notion Follow me, guys. Ridiculous notion. Oh, they're selling my lead to somebody else. Get over it. What do you expect for 20 bucks? Stop your <laughs> freaking crying. It's a $20 lead. I, I'm working with a Ford store right now that sells $50,000 expeditions. Can you, if you spend 
$2,000 on 100 leads. Don't think about you spend $2,000 to sell cars because that one individual lead that sold that helped sell that that expedition that fifty thousand dollar car yeah. with a twenty five hundred dollar gross only cost you twenty bucks. Hell, do you realize that I don't give a crap if like four or five of the dealers get that lead because those dealers are going to suck the way they answer the phones. They're they're going to suck with the follow up. They're going to suck with the value package, and they're going to probably blow it some other way. So I don't mind other dealers getting the leads. It's only twenty bucks. I just want my shot. Matter of fact. I don't even care if there's not a phone number. If there's not a phone number, I'm going to go to do a reverse lookup. I'm going to do a social media background, or I'm going to go to Spokio.com, and I'm going to hunt and gather and create something. That's the thing with this industry is that they think that these leads are magic commission beans. They're not. They're an opportunity to do business. Get on your grind and make something happen. You know, and the thing I love about this is it is it, it aligns so well with, with my thought process. I mean, the, the dealers are focused so much on the things that are out of their control when they could simply shift their focus on taking massive action with the things that are in their control. And I think, you know, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's everything that we're talking about today. You want to make money? Stop worrying about where, you know, lead source providers are selling, you, you know, leads or may or may not be doing this or that or what, what might be falling apart here or there. Focus on the things that are in your control. Take control of your processes. Take control you know, of planning. You know what you said, right, Michael? You just quoted Dr. Covey. That's the that's the first habit from the seven habits of highly effective people. It's being proactive, the proactive mindset. Circle of influence versus circle of concern. You know what? That is with everything in the automotive industry, from the salesperson to a manager to the department to the marketing to the BDC. Listen to me. People are concerned about what everybody else is doing. Oh, the dealer is, is giving prices on the phone. My competitors are putting invoice prices. They're doing in internet prices. Oh, this lead switch provider. You're worried about all the shit you have no control over. Focus on your attitudes, thoughts, actions, and behaviors. Stop worrying about your competitor. Stop worrying about what everybody else is going to get. Focus on yourself. Damn it. Be proactive. Word. Yeah, love it. So, okay. So, I mean, you know what? People people's brains are going to be oozing out of their ears at this point. Um, so, such a wealth of information, Sean. No question that you are where proof is in pudding. And the reality of it is, is that you've done exactly what you've said. And that's that's where I think this is so legit. You know, there's there's hundreds of thousands of people in the car industry today who are concerned about how they're not making money when they should be focused on how to make money and then implementing a course of action. There's no doubt that you have the ability to do that. Um, I want to thank you for being on the show today. We're going to wrap it up. But what I want to do is is just let everybody know, hey, there's a couple of things where you can connect more with Sean because I know absolutely you're going to want to be doing that. First one is Internet Sales 20 Group Boston, September 22nd through the 24th. That's going to be such an incredible event. Sean, you want to take a minute and just talk about That's, Internet it's, Sales? It's prop and, 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 and out there, guys, this is one to get to. Party alone is worth the trip, man. <laughs> Sean, throws a good, Sean knows how to throw a good party. It's so unlike it's, any other event I've ever attended, So, but I want to turn it over to you, Sean, and just give a little bit of a, a description for those who, again, are living under a rock who haven't heard of the Internet Sales 20 Group about what goes on there. Yes. Um, well, first and foremost, thank you so much for uh, for allowing me to kind of mention the workshop. It is a major three day workshop, September twenty second to the twenty fourth in Boston, in full partnership with the Massachusetts State Auto Dealer Association. And it's my first OEM gig. I'm actually working uh, very intimately with Toyota Manufacturer from New England to the point that Toyota Corporate in California approved the curriculum. That means any Toyota dealership in New England that goes gets Toyota OEM certification credits. Uh, wow. Super wow. Manufacturer is also going to be there. I've got 25 amazing speakers. Uh, one of them is yourself, Mr. Michael. Hey, and, hey. Uh, Robert Wiseman is going to be moderating. We've got Jim Ziegler. We've got you know Joe Calla. You know Karen Bradley. We've got um, you know just a ton of industry people. We talked about lead source providers. We're going to have Scott Peckstein. I was just going to say I don't know why I was just going to go Scott Peckstein. I don't know why. We've got um, you know True Car. You know Kevin. Um, you know Ken Potter. We've got Cars Direct. Todd Dearborn. I mean, there's just so many companies. Digital Airstrike. Danny Benitez. Benitez. Oh yeah, thank you. And then we have we have six dealers principles. So guys, this is what's really cool. We have six dealer principles in GMs. We've got uh, the president of the MSADA, uh, Scott Doobie, who's the president of Bill Doobie Hyundai. We've got Danny Benitez, the general manager of Greg Lair Buick GMC. We've got um, Mike Udell, the general manager of Toyota Grand Rapids. We've got Ron Boss, the uh, dealer principal of Spirit Chrysler Dodge. We've got um, 
Paul Sansone Jr., who is the owner of, of Route 66 Auto Mall. And we also have uh, David Blassingame, who is the dealer principal of Autoflex uh, Leasing in, uh, in Texas. So wh- here's what, what it is, long story short. It's not like a, a regular event. Uh, it's high, high interaction. What we try to do, it's like a 20 group on steroids. We're going to have probably about 150 to 200 dealers there. And we're, instead of it being like a three ring circus where there's going to be different workshops happening, it's one stage. I believe that an internet department or dealership is made or broken in four key categories, your products, your people, your process promotions. So each one of the speakers are broken down into categories. So this, instead of it being like a buffet, like all the other workshops, this is a seven course meal at a five star restaurant. Um, and then me and my wife are Franklin Covey trainers. So we have a lot of exercises for, uh, you know, goal planning, projecting. We have an exit strategy that each individual attendee gets their own custom, um, you know, work plan. And then obviously the, the major huge thing is that, and I don't know if you guys know this, but Toyota manufacturer has asked us to analyze 28 of their stores. Check this out. So we are going to do a composite. We actually did the composite and we're checking on you know, social media, SEO, reputation, website, lead source providers, mystery shopping the phones, mystery shopping the emails. Uh, they're about seven KPIs. So we've analyzed 28 different dealerships in one market, and we're going to be able to go through these benchmark composites. And then uh, to close on some fun stuff, we have uh, – I, I booked a yacht. So I'm dropping like 25 <laughs> uh, whiz notes uh, on three hours. Dinner, open bar, party like rock stars in, in Boston. And then the second day – We've got Toyota manufacturer sponsored uh, cocktail hour with um, a call review and Automark Solutions. So we have two back to back VIP parties, and guys, we've never had two days of VIP parties. So I don't know how people are going to get back to work on Thursday, but it's gonna- <laughs> I'm sure they'll figure it out. It's going to be an incredible event. I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, I'm looking forward to speaking there, connecting with all the dealers. Listen, if you have not checked out Internet Sales Twenty Group. Stop everything you're doing right now. Go to www.internetsales20group.com. You're going to see all the information that uh, Sean just talked about. He's going to be there, and he's going to be dropping some serious power bombs just like he did in this episode where you're going to learn. I mean, that's the important thing. Listen, it's not about talking about it. As you can tell, we are all sick of talking about why it's important to make money. You're going to learn how to make money, and unless that's something you don't want to do, it's time to go get a job at McDonald's. Also, just say if they, uh, every one of your listeners, if they go to www.bradleyondemand, B R A D L E Y on demand, I will give them a free test drive. There is a tremendous amount of free education on there for a test drive. I'm talking about showroom sales, how to make money, internet sales, BDC. This is for showroom people, internet directors, dealerships, individuals. And by the way, because you said this about me, I want to close. I don't know if you've ever had a, you know, a, um, an interview that closed with the theme song. You know? So I'm going to close the show out myself. You ready, people? This is Let's when you think it. of Sean Let's B. Bradley. It. I'm too legit to quit. There it is. He's too legit. There you go, man. Bradley on demand. Triple W dot Bradley on demand. If your diagnosis is to go work at McDonald's, your prescription is Bradley on demand. Sean, thanks you, thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs> your prescription. There it is, man. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you guys for having Sean, me. brother. Thank I'll you. see you. In a, we'll see you in Boston, my man. Talk thank to you, you soon. Thanks, man. Later. And right there you have it. Everybody, my friend, Sean V. Bradley, uh, was great to have Sean on. Uh, people were, a lot of people were wondering, hey, how come you haven't, they, they know him and I are friends and ask me, why, why haven't you had Sean on yet? And it's just like, I didn't want to always go to like That's because he the travels obvious. 30 yeah, days of a He's busy. I mean, month. we did try to, we, we have been trying to put this together for a while. And it's just, you, you uh, we want to give you just, and many different, you know what I mean? Views and, and information as yeah. possible. You know so. what? No doubt he brought it. And I mean, he gave us so much valuable information that I, you know, it, without question, I mean, I don't know about you, correct me if I'm wrong, but what he talks about is so relevant to making money. The fact that people don't have a vision, they're going to work. And I mean, this kind of leads back into, you know, Cardone's episode, Grant Cardone's episode. Why, why do people hate what they do? They suck at it. Why do they suck at it? And I mean, Grant alluded to the fact that there's no sequence to 
um, how they build their business. And I mean, I love this stuff because it's, I don't want to say fundamental as much as foundational. The reason you probably suck at your job is because you're going doing this nine to five or, or sometimes a lot longer than that. And you don't have a vision of what you want to become or what you want to achieve. Exactly. They're not dived. They're not all in, you know, and they're not, they're not taking it serious. They're not passionate about it. And, and that's where it all starts. And I mean, Sean gave some great, you know, information. Like for example, if you're not buying third party leads right now, guys, buy them and just give it a run and, and make a good plan for them. They're so and affordable. Make, and, and you will make more money. I'm going to be talking uh, a little bit about this topic at Internet Sales 20 Group in Boston, September 22nd to the 24th, all about how to lower your cost per lead acquisition. So I want you to go check out that website for sure, www.internetsales20group.com. If you're not registered, register right now. You cannot afford to miss out on the information. But I mean, the fact of the matter is $646 average cost per lead acquisition from all of these sources by eliminating the ones that don't work. Think of how much money you're saving. And guess what? Part of making money is knowing where to save money. No doubt about it. And and in the show notes, guys, at dealerplaybook.com uh, slash what is 24 you're going to be able to get a hold of uh, links to Bradley on demand, as Sean mentioned, where you can get a free test drive. T- jump on there, guys. It's free training. You know, get in there and 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 take advantage of, of his you know of his generosity. Um, get all his contact if you're not hooked up with Sean already. It's going to be again at dealerplaybook.com/slash twenty three twenty four. Rather, we have all his contact information. Also, Mike. Well, Michael, I was going to steal you. I was going to give your uh, plug for you today, man. Yeah, man, I was go feeling for it. so good about go it because it. I am excited about it. And I hear him, uh, Michael's been talking with me about this for a long time and he knows I love to tease him, but I'm very excited for him and excited for our team for uh, Michael Cirillo dot com. Michael, what, what is Michael it? Michael A. Cirillo. A. Cirillo dot com. This will be in the show notes slash book. And he's got a, you know, a, a one of a kind book coming out that's about this in, you know, taken control online in the automotive industry and there's some great little bonuses and you know special exclusive content for a limited time that if you just cost nothing just to email to go over there and sign up to be notified and you're going to get some extra bonus stuff that that's going to blow your mind it's going to be you know make the the value of what already is a small purchase even better love it appreciate that man um Thank you so much for listening in. Again, thedealerplaybook.com, where we're going to include links to Sean's information, especially Bradley on Demand and the Internet Sales 20 group. Um, so do, me, do us a favor. Go check out thedealerplaybook.com forward slash 24. Don't forget to subscribe. And again, thank you so much for being here, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya. See ya.